Hello everyone, it's Love here and today a Jeskai control deck with a hero you might not see at the first sight. Restless Spire. This card absolutely blew my mind. It's insane. The Emperor interaction is insane because you can just put the counters and only activate this card when your opponent is tapped. It's also insane at killing planeswalkers, especially with the counters. Alright, you will see deck in action. I want to just say a quick thank you for all the support. Really appreciate you guys being here and if you want to be part of the channel, don't forget to subscribe and you know hop on the journey and yeah let's go into games we go like this and we have full just kind mana and we can start play from there all right so we have mirex we can create a lot of pressure this way but it's not super tempo efficient i think it's a good target it also taps him fully you know not the perfect stuff but i think that's okay I think if we hit... man, let's go, let's freaking go, alright, double spire, this might be our win con man, we'll see, we'll see, but it might be hard for them to answer at each step, that's the Emperor turn by the way, uh, he should main phase it, like, he, this should be populated by the end of the turn, <laughs> hi, alright, we have very good mana, we do not have Emperor mana yet, but we don't need one. Here's the Scrutiny for two. Man, I, with uh, Jeskai I can be much more aggressive than normally. Alright, quick study for sure. This is not super great. I think we take card advantage. Oh, I, I have to discard? You sure, bro? I'm, I will definitely draw something. Uh, let's go for the Mountain. Field of Ruin might be a little bit of, you know, mistake. Man, my screen on my phone is like highlighted and it's so distracting. All right, it's good now. So uh, usually with this, with those colors, I'm super, like much more aggressive than normally. Let's go like this, right? I don't want to play into open mana. We are getting card advantage every turn and we can start Mirax. Uh, just because if he plays a Planeswalker with Azorius, you only have like Fateful Absence, maybe Stroke, this kind of stuff. But with Jeska, you just go Fires of Victor and you don't even care. Absolutely perfect. Main phase? What the hell, man? Why would you ever do this? Is that a quick stab? I think it's Mirex. To be fair, I should torch the tower first. A little bit of bad play, but it shouldn't matter, I can always use the, the Viper. Yeah, it would be more card efficient, but less... Right, I attack you and see what happens. Oh, that went very smooth. I love it! Very nice. I think this is the turn. What our opponent is doing. So we can start Mirex and that's that's the that's the fun part. I see, I see. That's pretty cool. Alright, he's fully tapped out. This is our turn. So we can go for some super plays. Or we can just go Fires of Victor on one of them, Viper on the second one, and then Emperor. Yeah, that's pretty good. It also gives us card advantage. And we cannot activate Mirex. If we go went with the untapped one, we could go for two mana and instead of card make another Mirex, which would be a better play, honestly. But we cannot really know. This time we are not going for the play. You know what it means, my friend. <laughs> oh, you know. Fully tapped. Still, it's not bad for him, but it kind of creates a lot of pressure already. So now he needs to not only answer the Might token, but also the Emperor, right? So that's even more. That's even more. So uh, we are not in full control of the game. We don't have counter spurs, but we are dealing a lot of pressure. And oh boy. We need a very quick removal. Drawing cards? That is, an interesting fact. that is an interesting fact, because my friend, do you know how our stuff works? 
Because you're the fairy, bro. Is super dead. And we put the counter here. And uh, because it's more that man, I love this. Man, this card is absolutely amazing. Look at this. Absolute planes for her removal. No, not the matchup. We just drew a card. And we can make more Mirexes. Oh, the fur didn't like this one. And best part? Do we go for this? No, might. Like, this is a Mirex game. And we have a huge mana advantage over this guy. Like, the fact that we never drop a, a land is huge in this kind of matchups. As you can see, every mana extra is just a creature X and extra pressure. Oh, the top land is huge as well. Having 6 and 7 mana on this kind of situation is huge. If he farewells, it doesn't really do anything, man. Like, it can hit a 2-2, two -two, so it's 6 mana smite. <laughs> just worse. Eternal Wanderer. But what you gonna do with it? Alright, right, right, right. This is a pretty good one. This is a pretty good one. So we cannot attack with multiple, so we need to draw into some cardo, I guess. Oh, I, w I would love to play this one. You know what? We're doing it. It has absolutely zero sense, but it's super fun, alright? <laughs> alright, this is a challenge. So, we could go for a quick study and try to find Fires of Victory. We don't have too many of those, but I'm going for it. Alright, this is something, not too much, but it might help a little bit. You can see, this land man makes a lot of difference and our Emperor is just pumping with loyalty. Oh, man, I'm so good at magic. Oh my god, I just realized that I can kill the stuff. Land. No. The special, we don't need the Ganjo. Mold. Man, look at this card! It absolutely destroys his whole gameplay. Uh, are you sure this is the mana we want to use? I want to use the Viper, but I cannot. I need more red. I tapped wrong. And we need to answer it immediately while he's tapped, you know? So that's the point. Alright, this will be an interesting game. I think we have still some gas on both sides, so you know. Yeah, we we really would love to use the Emperor for minus one, but we don't really have time. And I, I need to tap her like three times in one turn to get rid of all of this loyalty. But just plus one counters are so good. That's not a good play for him. We play the land, so he's keeping the mana to answer the Spire. Because he thinks that we are silly enough to use it. We must protect I'll tell you, we are not. And that creates a lot of mana advantage for us for future turns. And we want to use Mirex. I actually think we go for the Viper, man. This is a good turn to use it. It doesn't really break anything. We have good mana for Deluge. In the worst case, even Emperor. And that's already quite a lot of pressure. You know, not the most, but yeah, that was the removal that was reserved for this. Okay, maybe not for both of the Spires. That's actually quite meaningful. But we cannot get it out of cutdown range. We could memory the rush if we cared. But Mirex is a bit better. So farewell hits only creature, treasure and disenchantment that gets sticking. It also helps against, you know, when you mill your opponent. Alright. Not much not many creatures in both of the graveyards. <laughs> I'll take it. I don't need this stop, but I will still do it. So as you can see, he's starting to keep mana for our Spire, and that's the beauty. Then you don't activate it, oh sorry. Then you don't activate it. And it's a threat that he needs to respect every single turn, especially hard to answer when he's uh, low on the mana. Like this way, he's just getting more and more behind. May your blade strike true. I attack. 
but only with one. All right, smite, emperor, sure. All right, that's a that's a heavy tap. We might go for a memory of those then. We could go for another emperor. Honestly, it should be worth the tempo. Not very efficient play, but good enough because we are keeping the tempo. And that makes Emperor much weaker. Okay, only blue mana. Uh, I will cast this because that means I can go for the Mirax. And the more pressure you go for... Oh, those are some amazing cards. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Is that... Fires of Victor and the Emperor. Man, you can see that everything just keeps working here. Yeah, I will burn those treasures. They are absolutely amazing. But it's even more amazing to keep doing cards while removing your opponent card at the... Man, I love this deck. All those cards are insane. Man, I knew Spire is good. But it's even better, man. Alright, 3 mana. He's getting to a point where he has a lot of mana, but he's tapping main phase just to get the counter. Very interesting choice. Let's read the text. Those cards. That's very mean. That is very mean. How man? Okay, I need three black mana. That's no two black mana. So I can get one from the treasure. You are a mean person, my friend. <laughs> we can go for the Emperor if we care. So I think we go Fires of Victory. And what? And Emperor? Guards, to me. That's not too much value, man. Uh, not having Kaya. Yeah, I needed those treasures. Maybe I misplayed. I didn't think I would hit Kaya, man. <laughs> but that's good. It means that you can play deck even better, alright? Much better. So it's even better than what you see here. Maybe? Alright, I mean, I won. So this was a really hard turn because I could play the Emperor just for extra value on the, on the counters. He has only white mana. It could be white march, but... You can see that we absolutely outvalue control decks, man. That's that's insane. All right, guys, our opponent has played the land and passed the turn. The usual control stack. This, uh, this turn, I will actually go for the mountain. We have two of those, so we can keep going for a while and then go with the spire. Oh, I see. So now he knows there is a removal on the board. And that's unfortunate. That's not something we really want him to know about, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, if I was a little bit, little bit better player, I should take the uh, the steps to avoid this one. Are you? Yeah, you are. In, you are in the end step. So we kill the Kami. Perfect, man. When you exile this Kami, is always just feeling absolutely great. We don't really need more. We can go with the Spire on this turn. You probably don't want to bounce uh, the dog, so yeah, let's keep this one. And with the spires, we should be able to fish for value. Man, I'm kind of excited for this card. But of course, it's for the later parts of the game where everyone is just top decking a little bit. Or you just have so much control over the game that, you know, it's fine. You bastard. <laughs> oh, I hate it. All right, we got the stuff. I don't think it does anything, right? Enchanted creature or Calyx. I take the damage. I don't like it. And it's fine. So this is a really great target for the bouncing. But I don't want to, you know, target the dog with anything. So I'll just take the damage turn and try to stabilize. Perfect draw. Absolutely amazing draw, man. That's something we really needed right now. So this will be a very brutal turn, we don't really have interaction, so we need to kinda survive it on full mana. Our opponent thinks that we are a Z deck, because so far we don't have anything white. I should probably play a Forge on this turn, because I might draw something. 
That's a great bounce target. Man, this is a perfect bounce target. Best one in the deck. So we will absolutely do it. Then we have Viper for the Companion, if we care. We just need some more lands. And as you can see, two damage a turn is just something you simply can ignore. And this is how you play control decks. You don't need to answer any, everything, you just need to answer things that really matter, so you, the rest can just die to Sandfall, and that's where your advantage comes from. So I don't need more than 4 mana on this turn, this is a perfect plan for the turn. I want to force a bigger board, this is not a huge investment, it's more psychological, uh, that he feels that he needs to invest heavily into the board because we are fighting for it when in reality we absolutely don't care it's like we will use this card we will waste this card but we will probably get one or two extra cards from him thanks to this at least that's that's the strategy most players will fall for it a little bit especially that it's you know taxing on the life total and while it doesn't matter it feels that man i need to go fast he also cannot see i got a full card from this and it's even better because now I can fully sun for and the dog is doing his best but it's it's not looking super hot. I honestly will go like this. The fact that we can start getting all this uh, value and treasures will really help. I could attack with the spire but I don't need to. So we have the plan for the spires but we don't, just don't super care about it. We have better things to do and right now he really should force more stuff into the board. And it, yeah, yeah, like when we get to chapter three, <laughs> oh man, all right, all right, that's fine, but we still get the treasure and card for cards. Usually they don't super play it. Perfect, so whatever, all right, all right. Can we take this hit? That's the question, 11 damage, that's a lot. That's a lot, but we will take it. We are not scared. That's a... Do I? One is all you need, right? <laughs> I could burn the treasure, but... At this situation, I don't super need to do it. Do I want to activate the Spire? Nah. I just activate the token. And I don't need to use the treasure then. Oh, the mo Yeah, this is why I don't like playing non-control decks. <laughs> when you get this land, man, you know it's over. Oh, that's a non-pain land for white source. So next turn it's Mishiko. I know I'm not using the Spire yet, but it's good to have it. Uh, but I have even better plays, so you know we just go maximum value first. Let's see what he plays. He only has one draw a turn, so it's very easy to play around stuff. When he plays it, we see the full turn and then we can make the optimal decision. I think he's out of the game already. I don't think he can win. Even though he answered this, that would exalt three cards and probably give us some win cons. Is that a rage quit? Is that a, another Sunfall Celestia Enchantment rage quit? I think it is. How to not be mean? All right, maybe he's thinking about something. I mean, sure. Do I want to clock him? I can clock him like this. Now we draw a card. Perfect, that card really does a lot of difference. Because now we can control whatever is happening and that's the stage. See, we have a lot of mana and we can still get the scry every turn. Absolutely lovely. Man, we just drew a card. This is draw a card sometimes. And with Syncopate we should be able to still counter the Hollowed Hunting, which is probably the worst thing right now. We will have what? One, so five, six mana. Yeah, Hollowed Hunting is not working good for him right now. And because there is no board, we can go for the wild and waste the adventure. Because there is nothing that threatens us. Man, what is this card that he tanks so heavy? And as you can see with whales, those lands, you can absolutely go crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, I mean the game ended, so that's fine. But man, we work for... You can see the spire in late game? It's absolutely amazing.
Alright guys, uh, definitely not the type of uh, hand we want to be on the draw. It should be like this. We don't need white mana for a while, so this can be our third land. This would be our second land. That's exactly something we would love to syncopate, but we will make it work. We will get the whale. I think we can take some damage to make sure that our plays are better. Yep, that's why we have it. That's why being on the draw is so brutal, man. You really get... Uh, like, you need to rework for your counter spells, but it's getting closer. If we have 4 mana, we can go for the thing. Sure. Don't forget, next turn it can be the Emperor at the end step, which is probably the best deal here. So he's playing around make disappear. But not around Syncopate. Shell is still here. But it's fine. Also, it means Sleeper will be much weaker and much slower. So, he plays a land. One, two. He cannot go above three. So we can kill the Sleeper at the end step, whatever he does. That is a Demir mana, so it can be a counter spell, but we'll see. I'm taking the damage. It's super important that you click it fast. It makes them feel much more comfortable. So they have something for three. It could be dissipate. It could be dissipate. I need to be mana efficient, so it should be either the Emperor or the Duelist. I can take this damage. All right, nothing at sorcerer speed. I think we go like this. This is likely to get countered. That's extremely powerful. And that means that next turn, if we draw a land at Sunfall, uh, that solves everything. All right, not good at magic, so we'll play a different game. Hmm, that's a bit rough. All right, so I think it's Fires of Victory and the Whale. I think that's the play. So they can draw a card, but they cannot go above 4-4. Four, four. So he should attack, of course, and we will see the pump. You need to click it fast, but he's learning. He's quite smart here. All right. First step. I think he kind of wants to counter it if he can. But make disappears are not great here. All right. He di didn't pump as well. So, because he didn't play a land, we can kill this. Even now. All right. Not exactly how I wanted to play it, but it's fine. Is that shell? That's usually the good follow-up. All right, Kaito. Kaito is a very strong card. That's not something I played around really. Alright, down to 7. And we need to create a lot of pressure. They can answer Planeswalkers, but not super well. They generally assume... Yep, here is the shell. Alright, life gaining doesn't really make a difference, but cycling... Oh, no land, so... He wants the land. That's interesting. He knows that we have something. So I want to bait him. That's not some... So if he won't block... I think he won't block. Yep. That's the damage. We don't have lands. That's a bit scary. That is a little bit scary. Don't forget we can have a sunfall. We just need to draw an, a land. And then we solve the straw that. And they don't really have burn uh, in other forms. Tenacious Underdog and Trespassers are closest to burn. So we need to be careful, but don't forget we have Emperor, so we can live gain too in some ways. Interesting choice. Alright. That means our Emperor can exile Shoulder, and that's way easier. But he needs to tap for it. Alright. Down to what? Creature? If he exiles my graveyard, it's no damage. <laughs> Alright, good choice, good choice. 
Man, this is a make disappear mana. But I don't think we have a choice. We need to pain ourselves, so we just need to go with it. But I think it gets countered. Or maybe not. That's pretty good. It also means we don't get to night time. What is it? Mm. Alright, alright, very smart. Man, we are not great at drawing lands. One fourth of the deck, so I'm playing 16 lander. And guess what? I'm not playing 16 lands. <laughs> Oh boy, it's fine. Alright, one damage. Is that sure that I'm a little bit scared right now? This is sorcerer speed, don't forget. Alright, this means he needs to cast something if he wants to get a good trade. Don't play sure. Don't play. Don't play sure that. <laughs> Come on, bro. Good game. It was uh, well played. I, yeah, I, I think the fact that we didn't, that we never hit the fifth round and our sunfalls couldn't be used uh, really handicapped our chances. Our opponent played some lands. We played some lands, and we'll have a great game of magic. Having quick stat is huge here because it seems that we are against control deck, which is pretty amazing already. Let's see if that's a stat. All right, they don't have the card. Alright, this is definitely an em Emperor turn, right? We don't have Emperor, so we try to go for this and see the reaction. Is that the Emperor or a counter spell? I would think that it's one of those. This is not the best target for a counter spell, but it's a good enough target for a counter spell. Alright, now we reverse. I mean, it's probably Sun for. Sure, never mind. And now we need to solve some troubles, my friend. So that was very cheap for the cards, what he did, but it's also lower value than other stuff that he could be doing. First, we go like this, so we need to maximize the tokens. Then we attack, we see what's up. Hi, what's up? That's up, mm -hmm. sure. So we, now we are just trading some removal. We could go for Fire so Victory. This is a strong card. This is really good. I think for a few turns we'll keep playing stuff. Alright, I have a counter. Alright, that's important. Do we want to fight for the board? I think it's decent. It's very, very risky. I might get super punished for it, but I'll take the risk because I need some card advantage, I feel. And it also means that it's harder for him to start attacking. He will probably remove it. It shouldn't be hard, but he only has five cards. That's a pain land. All right, good for him, but no tokens, so it's just cycling. Life total doesn't super matter. It matters a little bit. But we should be able to... Oh, that's really bad for him. That is really bad for him. Let's see. I think he will be pressuring board very well right now. But we have a dissipate on this turn. And I think that we might keep it. We have Wild, a Ganjo, and Dissipate. That's quite a lot of reac reaction play, you know? So we can negate one of the Mirax triggers. We could go for the Whale, which should trigger a Sweeper. But that's a lot of mana, we don't want to do it. Uh, like, I risked already once with no counter spells, and I don't think I should do it more. Alright, you guys deserve it. Honk of the day! <laughs> it's so good. Man, this, this battle is a pure win. I have to. It, it exiles, yep. And when you get this exile, this is your best card for the matchup. It gives you card advantage and then game closing cap capabilities. All right, good, good. I like it. The fact that we can beat control with full value is very comforting. All right, opponent goes first. We have quite a lot of removal, but we are on the draw. Our mana base is pretty decent. Our opponent is still good at magic, so he is playing one drop. <laughs> Oh man, it will get rough. Are you Talia? Let's see. Oh, no way they took a one lander. Yeah, Talia. Every, every single time. 
Guys, is it even possible? Like, why? Why is it happening? So, I could play this guy. 3-1. That slows down, down the game a lot. And I think this is what we have to do, because we need to wait until the sunfall with Talia on board. So we don't, we won't have time to play, you know, the 3-drop. If we were supposed to play a 3-drop, we can play any of the other ones, you know? Sure. For the match is something we can take. Nothing at dance step. Man, he took a very risky hand, it seems. And it might not pay out. Maybe that's multiple Talia. They have something. They have already 3 mana. They definitely should play something already. That's the turn. And now he needs to play something or his board will be empty at the end of, this, of the turn. And that's not what you want. I think we're in this decent spot. And... Alright. Man, that's, a, that's such a weird thing. Target non-land permanent. Oh, it's... Oh, it's sorcery. Alright, alright, cool. Learning my cards as I go. So, we clear the board, which means we open next turn with no Talia in the board. And he cannot re replay her. I think he has multiple Talias. That felt like a, I have a Talia in hand. <laughs> alright. And now we have Emperor. Even if he replaces Talia, we had this empty spot uh, when we can cast stuff. Vanguard. Sure. Up. Oh, he's out. Alright, this is the turn when he lost. Uh, we have a lot of pressure on the board and he will have nothing. Oh boy, it gets, it gets better. It gets better. See ya, nerd. <laughs> Painland, absolutely fine. We don't have blue mana, that's something we need to pay attention to, but look at our board. And this is the cool part about adventures. I mean, it's not the biggest deal in the world that you have a 2-1, but we wouldn't have it if we didn't have the backside, you know? Or the, you know, the permanent side of the adventure. That's the point, you always get something extra that normally you wouldn't have, and he needs to answer it. Like, he cannot attack for this. Not even... <laughs> Like, look at this! It actually makes him scoop uh, a 2-drop with a 2-1, because now he has 3 creatures that he needs to go through. Alright, we absolutely obliterated this guy. Alright guys, time for the outro part, the talking about the deck, the boring part. But you know what? I really appreciate you being here, because that's the most fun part for me. I really love talking about those decks. And Restless Spire, originally, to be honest, I thought it's 3 mana for activation, and that's why I wasn't super excited by it. When I realized it's just 2, and the scry, it's, it's insane, man. This is a perfect Planeswalker killer, and the fact that they're also providing really good mana, it, it just everything works. When you add Emperor to the mix, and then your opponent can never tap, which means that you are taxing them every turn. And if they, you know, tap out fully, you just get a free value. First strike also matters, especially if con for control decks. Like, if you have Torch the Tower, your opponent double blocks, because he wants to kill the Spire and then you just get 2 for 1. So even if they defend Planeswalkers, this puts so much pressure, man. Especially with like 1, 2 counters, it's already, you know, 4 or 3. That's a lot of stats for a lot of stats for basically three mana. Scry also really helps in top deck wars. This is one of the reasons we don't go super hard on the value. It's just double the rush, uh, triple quick study. We also have uh, the noble thief. Honestly, it wasn't the best card for the for game. Probably big score was a little bit better. Would be a little bit better. But I really wanted to go for this exile the top three card because basically you give your opponent um, like two turns to prepare for your win con turn and I kind of like this idea quite a lot. So, Scalding Viper, even though it's a rare, I, it was a co okay card. I think the fact that uh, the bounce effect is sorcery really takes a lot of power from this. So, honestly, I think you can do a little bit better with this. However, it also helped during a lot of turns, especially that you kind of can be aggressive with this deck. You have wells, you have manlands that can be ramped heavily, emperor putting the tokens. So, you know, when you get them to this 15, 14 with the passive, 
like it makes a huge difference suddenly they need to start defending and the bounce effect together with a creature that kind of blocks a lot of stuff like it blocks kumano so it means that you get always some value it also blocks uh, emperor samurai token so pretty good stuff for heart flame duels i didn't really use it too much i didn't hit it in the games too much so yeah, I think this could be interesting. I really wanted to have this Fires of Victory because this is one of the spells that can go absolutely over the top of the damage if you have a lot of cards, especially if you pay the kicker cost. So that was the idea. Um, yeah, I mean, it was okay. But honestly, the Spire, the Spire is one of the cards that makes this whole different deck, even though we play a lot of cards the same as usual in Jeskai. But with this, it's amazing. Also, Torch the Tower, man, for some reason, it car this card feels amazing. Even the fact that you can sacrifice either the enchantment or just the treasure token, you know, or just something small like an emperor token. Sometimes it makes all the difference. So I really like the card and I already was playing Flameless Bolt so heavily in all of my Jeskai decks. So it's just better and the art is absolutely amazing so guys i really am happy with the dress guy we had good results we didn't play too many games and uh, because i need to publish the video already but yeah i think there's a lot of power and i was a bit surprised that there doesn't seem to be much new dress guy decks at least i didn't see them and i think it's a valid archetype like you have all the stuff you need to make a great control deck and with the spire you can go even harder than some other decks Jeskai is the only combination that has the Spire and the Emperor, unless you want to go four or five colors. So I think this is the big thing. We don't play Zurgo and Ujatai. First, I wanted to test new cards. Second, I think we have enough. We have Whale, we have Manlands, Emperor tokens, and yeah, just small things like Duelist, Viper, they add up, you know? Over time, you just draw all the removal from your opponent with those cards, then you start making tokens, Whales, and he just falls apart, especially that you have some counter spells so guys it was a little bit long but i'm really excited about this deck i think we can make it even better uh, but yeah i think jessica is pretty amazing and it's really fun to play so if you're a control player check out this deck maybe think twice about the viper uh maybe think twice about the duelist but this is probably extremely nice craft i really like this card man i really did all right i hope you enjoyed the video have fun guys and see you tomorrow